Hi guys, thank you for joining me today for my first table talk. Um, I'm gonna be doing these on Tuesdays just to switch it up from always reading uh, to make it a little bit more interesting. And I'll have different people come on and talk about some lighthearted topics, some more serious topics. Um, but today I have my sisters, my older sister Christiana and my younger sister Melinda. And we probably will laugh a little, so just bear with us. But we had some people send in some questions and we're just gonna kind of do a little low key mix of both, maybe some serious, but for the most part, just some low key questions. So first of all, the first question we were asked was, what was our favorite memory together? I'm gonna start off, Christiana, you can answer this one first. Um, I don't have a favorite memory. That's nice. <laughs> I mean, no, I have a lot of good memories. I guess I would say, um, uh, one, favorite memory I have was when um, we went a few summers in a row we went to Sea Isle oh, yeah. with the five of us and stayed in a, a house on the bay and I thought that was really fun because it was like a nice way to close out the summer so that was good memories and just yeah that's all I think my favorite memory was not necessarily one specific kind of the same as you but my favorite childhood memory in general is when um, my dad would randomly text my mom and say like pack the girls bags and we would go stay over right. in the hotel just to swim, watch the game, eat pizza. And as a kid, that was like so exciting. The hotel was literally like 15 minutes down the road, but just to be able to leave whatever we were doing, our schoolwork, all that, and just go stay in a hotel. That's probably my yeah, favorite that was, memory. That's a good one. <laughs> Mine was probably um, when we went, to, we used to, or we still kind of do, go to New York after oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, Christmas yeah, yeah. for my birthday. And we always go out to eat and Mm -hmm. right. Yeah, me too, actually. That's probably... Yeah. It's our first one, not too exciting. <laughs> uh, secondly, where did you go to college, and what was your major? <laughs> I guess I'll start this one. Probably. <laughs> uh, I finished college. Um, I went to Vision, which is at our church. It actually started its first official year, my first year of college, after graduating high school. So I had kind of been praying about different ones I would maybe go to, but I really felt peace. A lot of my class did actually about staying and growing the college for its first year. And I'm really glad I did because that was exciting. Um, my major was music and um, student ministries. Sorry, <laughs> slipped my mind. Student ministries. And um, also I did, we kind of like something called MSAs. I did counseling, which is what I hope to further. But those were my majors. Uh, I went to a bunch of schools. <laughs> <laughs> I really did. Um, I didn't graduate from any college, sadly, but I did three and a half years at Liberty Online for did you? Child Psych, West Coast, yeah. and I did West Coast for a semester. That was more for the experience, because I had never gone away for school, um, but... And Harland. Yeah. What? <laughs> I didn't go to Harland. You Just did an online college. school that wasn't No, Liberty. it was called a, um, Crown. Like, no, Crown. Crown, yeah. But that wasn't Crown, like, in Tennessee Crown. Yeah. Well, I, anyway, I basically dabbled in a little of everything. But <laughs> <laughs> I would say the most time I put into school would be in a college university, not like a trade school, but in a college would have been for Liberty with child psychology focus on uh, crisis counseling but I did not finish that I'm very close but I did not finish that <laughs> and then you did do massage that. therapy yes so that was good jack of all trades <laughs> <laughs> I'm a senior at Vision and I'm majoring in administrative assistant so we'll see and what? done administrative, administrative assistant, assistant. Okay, next question would be, what are your future plans, ministry, job, etc.? You can start. I don't think I'm going to start this one. <laughs> <laughs> okay, uh, for me, Lord willing, I'd like to stay at our church, Solid Rock. I've always dreamed of doing that. Um, I like working with teens. Right now, I do a 10th through 12th grade girls Sunday school class with our youth pastor's wife, so I like doing that. Um, job. I work right now as an assistant for my dad, and I do like that, and I work with the music and stuff, so it's pretty much my Ugh, goals. My future. <laughs> uh, well... I'll tell him the big news. No, yeah. <laughs> no, I mean, have a child is my first goal. <laughs> um, have a healthy child. Um, but as far as, like, ministry, uh, 
my husband is called to preach and feels like he wants to help in a ministry somewhere. So I don't really have plans yet on that, but that would be something we'll probably wind up somewhere helping a church. Um, and then job, I mean, I'm going to be a stay-at-home mom for now. <laughs> no. I don't really have any other. <laughs> Currently, I mean, I mean, yeah. When the time comes, I'll be a stay-at-home mom. I'm not a stay-at-home mom yet. Um, but, yeah, we'll see. I feel like I'm definitely not opposed to just getting another job if we move somewhere. Whatever. I don't really know. Honestly, there's a lot up in the air because of the fact that my husband feels, Mikey feels called to ministry. So that's very broad right now. So he's in Bible college on night classes. So we'll see. I don't really have any plans other than, <laughs> yeah, figure out what the Lord wants. Um, Lynn? <laughs> I hope to get married and then wherever I wind up helping in the church that I wind up in and I would like to foster care and I would like to do foster care and work in like an office and then be a mom. So the next question is, what are some challenges in serving in the ministry that you grew up in? It's a little Who bit. wants to go first? Hmm. I can, I guess. <laughs> Maybe, like, trying to separate yourself from, like, who you were. Like, meaning people will always remember you as what you were when you were a child. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's a good one. Yes? Yeah. Uh, I guess kind of along those lines, I mean, I'm not super young. I'm 24. But sometimes, like, people see you after you've grown up your whole life as, like, a kid or oh, just a young, and when you start to take on certain positions where you might be in a little bit of a leadership position, you can be a little bit hesitant yourself to be like confident because you do feel younger, you do feel like, so I think that'd be the only thing that I would say, sometimes when I go like my Sunday school class, I'm teaching in front of someone who knew me from a young age, so it can be a little bit uncomfortable. That'd be the only thing I would say is a little bit of a challenge is being confident at now in my, um, so the next question was, thoughts on raising children in America's political climate? It's a mm. tough, sensitive topic. Um, I guess I can start, but I'm not having a child anytime soon, mm -hmm. and I don't have one, obviously. But um, obviously it is something that's scary, and when I think about when I do have children, what they will be raised in right now is definitely something that is a concern. Um, I guess the only thing I would say is I know you can't shelter them too much. Like, they do have to get out and live in the world. But to whatever degree, I would just do my best in my home to just teach what the Bible says, biblical principles. Um, don't allow a lot of room for fear in my home. I think that's a big thing to me. Yes, you want to be careful. Yes, you want to be aware of what's going on in the world. But I personally just want to make sure that I'm teaching them the confidence that we can have through Christ and that if you do have Christ... You do have everything, and there's no need to fear. So that'd be the only thing I could really project because I don't have children, but I should hope that would be the way I would be. To add to what you said, I think for me, one thing that I, as our kids get older, I don't want, I kind of want them to see the results of people's bad choices and kind of see firsthand in different ways, um, expose them to the repercussions of some of the decisions that our politicians and all are making, not shelter them to the point where they just are told that the policies are wrong or that laws are wrong, whatever it is, but kind of expose them to why so that they don't grow up narrow-minded with really not knowing why they believe what they believe in anything, politics or whatever. But, yeah, just like keeping them very happy, safe, sheltered from negativity but also at the same time, when it's the right time, exposing them to um, the results of making those bad political choices. I just think that it's important, like now more than ever, to try and keep it a holy place, your home, mm -hmm. and that's how you can help. Meaning, obviously, you're not raising them under a mushroom, but try to keep as much <laughs> sin as you mushroom. can out of it. Yeah. Yeah. Just the mushroom term was funny. That's okay. good. Um, we told them we were going to laugh, so. 
And next would be, what is your favorite part about Jersey mm-hmm. and your least favorite? Mm-hmm. Who wants to start on this one? Lenny, go ahead. My favorite part about Jersey is probably the people because it's just the people we were raised around. So it's like here and, it, and that we're close to a lot of stuff. What's your least favorite? Just like the sometimes the spirit of people. <laughs> so I guess I love them, and I, I don't know. And also just like this election made me mad that we're a blue state. So <laughs> that's the one thing that made that's my okay. favorite thing. I think my favorite thing about Jersey is kind of like what you're saying. The things that are close around, like we have the beach, 45 minutes. We have the city, 25 minutes. You know, there are some mountainous areas. Um, so I kind of like that we are close to everything that you would want to go see. I think my least favorite part, along with what she said, is that um, we've noticed just how uh, liberal our state is. And through the whole quarantine, just how extreme New Jersey was, that was not very fun. So that's probably my least favorite yeah, the thing least about favorite is- part of the governor yeah, <laughs> yeah sure. that, but yes <laughs> um my favorite part about jersey mm-hmm. uh i guess i would say it's where you were raised no <laughs> <laughs> no i think mm-hmm. my favorite part would just be yeah the diversity of places you can go people that are around um and then my least favorite is just, hmm, I have a list. Uh, I don't, I don't like the mindset, not just the liberalism. I don't like the fast pace or the intensity of people and the lack of kindness. So, I'm ready to just <laughs> get at all. Yeah, they're just not like polite, which is fine. I'm used to that, but I don't, I wouldn't necessarily choose to raise my child in New Jersey if it wasn't for family. Family makes it more difficult, but. Other than that, there's nothing holding me in Jersey. <laughs> I said family. Family yeah. is everything, so that's what I'm saying. At the same time, I would hate to leave because I'd hate to leave family. But the state, I don't have any ties to it. Well, our next question will be, um, what was it like when we all shared one bathroom with four girls in the house and dad? You dad guys had more of a problem yeah, because true. you guys shared a bedroom, too. I had my own mirror and stuff. Yeah, that's true. You yeah. guys had to deal with it. Was, I don't feel like it really wasn't that yeah, bad. Yeah, it wasn't. Because my Looking dad back. got up and got out early. And yeah. some people were needed the bathroom more. No, it was only bad more. when there were like special events. Like church. it was Christmas or something and or you're church. in a rush to get there. And we all had to get ready at the same time. That would probably be the only time it was like... But so we had it wasn't the mirrors and the plugs. It is in the true though that our dad definitely took yeah, the dad longest. Took the longest. Uh, everybody. <laughs> uh, Anyway, next question. This would just relate to us. Uh, marriage advice that has helped you the most. Oh, okay, you go first. Okay. Um, I actually was at someone else's shower, and it was kind of like just a discussion. We all went around the room and said something. And the one lady said, I, I can't remember who, but it's something I had heard, but it just struck me different when she said it is that when there are issues in your marriage or even things that you're just talking about, maybe you're not fighting, but it is a discussion, she said that you should always view it as it's the both of you as a team versus the problem, not versus each other. And that's helped me sometimes because in the moment you just Mm want to like really get your point across or you just kind of want to shut them down or you don't like what they're saying or you feel like this needs to be resolved right now and you wind up yelling and getting frustrated with each other. And sometimes I just try and calm it down and go, no, look, this is the problem. Let's just, in a nice way, talk about how we can solve this problem. So I think that's definitely the thing that's helped me the most within my not even year yet of marriage. That would probably be the top thing. Yeah, I think I have like two that kind of go together. But one is just, I don't know that someone actually gave me this exact advice, but the concept that like just worry about yourself and your own marriage and don't not even just comparing like physical items like oh someone's house versus your house but also just comparing your marriage like they're going to be different because no two people 
no two marriages are the same. It's different people in both. And so you may see outwardly that, oh, they're really good at this, or I wish this was like, aren't you know, but you don't know behind the scenes what's going on. So that's helped me like to never compare or well, try not to ever compare or also just because I think, and then this is kind of the second thing is don't expect perfection right out of the gate. Like I think when I first got married, I thought like, my house had to be exactly everything done, decorated, every, you know, immediately. And I'd have dinner ready every single night at this time. And it's like having grace with each other um, and, your, and your marriage, having grace with each other, which would mean having grace within your marriage. And just not letting comparison or whatever the word be rob the joy out of your own marriage. Because a lot of times if you're unhappy with something, most times it's just because you've seen someone else and so you think you should be unhappy. When in reality, do you even care about that? No, you care about it because you think you're supposed to care about having it or doing it or whatever. So just being real and, and also doing things that you enjoy doing as a couple. Like if you don't enjoy traveling, you don't have to travel just because everybody else you're friends with travels. But if you do, you know, then do that or whatever. You know, we enjoy going on trips, but other people may like, watching a movie every night together. We don't necessarily do that, but we don't want to do that. So just not comparing, not comparing, because finding happiness in what you actually find happiness in, not in what people tell you first to find it in. That was long. Mm -hmm. Okay, Um, the next one is pros and cons of traveling a lot, like when we were kids and teens. Um, I guess I could start because it would just kind of give a summary. When we were younger, we traveled more with my dad when he was a youth pastor. He was doing a lot of youth conferences, camp stuff like that. And then as we got older, kind of transitioned into um, more with my uncle and my aunt. And we do more of singing. And that's with most of the cousins, so that's fun. Um, My favorite pros, even from when I was younger, would be getting to see different things. Like we've been to lots of different countries, states, and that were very blessed to have been able to do that at such a young age and see all these different places that people dream of seeing and none of those were just because of us they were actually all most of them Mm -hmm. if not all were ministry things so the lord kind of used that for us as a way to get to see things that it was special for us um and he did that through ministry so that would be a pro um obviously meeting new people that's exciting um making friends we have a lot of different friends (laughs) (laughs) saying mine um And then the cons for me, uh, there aren't too many. I think the older you get, it's difficult uh, leaving things that are going on back at home. When you're younger, you just kind of do whatever you're told. You fly along. You don't really notice. But as you got older, like when I was in college, there would be college activities or you might miss a basketball tournament, like just random things. I think that would be the only con is that sometimes it does mess up with your schedule that you had had planned. The pros for me, I liked getting to see different churches and getting to meet new people. Like, you think about the friends that you make that wind up lasting just from going to their church once or twice. Um, Also, it's just just fun to sometimes switch up your schedule. Like, oh, we're going on this trip with the family instead of being home. And the cons, in high school, it was like catching up on schoolwork, like Vanessa said, missing tournaments, stuff like that. But... Overall, it doesn't have too many cons. I like to be home sometimes, so that, but. Mm, I think pros would be, um, well, I really, yeah, I really liked the actual traveling. I like, even when we travel still for singing, um, I enjoy going on the plane, staying in hotels. I like the road trips with all the cousins yeah Yeah. (laughs) I like the road trips whether it be back when we were younger with my parents and all or and our siblings or now like with all the cousins and my aunt and uncle I think it's like we're definitely a lot closer because of that than we would have been if we never especially with singing and stuff it's brought us very close and then you just get to learn a lot about your family and I think that's a pro and then also Again, like the relationships that are built through travel. And I think it's um, a pro is it keeps you kind of grounded because you'll see like if you tend to complain about something and then you go to another church and they don't have that at all, then 
it, it's, it was a good constant reminder of blessings in our life and also just the good things God was doing in other places. And you don't feel as like isolated. I think that's one thing if, if you are in a smaller church that it would be good to travel some and expose your kids to other churches, even if they're just 30 minutes away, but to let them know that they're not alone in the Christian life. Any cons? <laughs> oh, um, no, I don't really have any cons. I would travel all the time. I love it. I, even being married, like if my husband could come most of the time or all the time, then I would travel all the time. I love it. I love hotels. I think that's the thing. If, if Right, if your spouse can come. Yeah. I mean, they can't come every time, but right. I, would, I love traveling. Yeah, I don't have any cons. <sighs> Last question would be, as growing up as pastor's kids, which obviously we did, mm -hmm. um, not like, you, a lot of people have heard the term, do you feel like you grew up in a fishbowl? So I guess just kind of talking about how we felt um, if we were on display or if we were held to a higher standard, whatever you guys. I can do this one. Started, I mean. Okay. I think, <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that our church did very well with not, like... Because I've heard people's horror stories of, like, oh, their church would, you know, people would put them on blast publicly and stuff like that. I think our church didn't... Kind of mm -hmm. treated us just like the rest of the kids in the church. Mm -hmm. And then sometimes I was like, oh, this is nice. <laughs> sometimes it had its perks of... So I don't... I didn't really look at it in a negative way as being a staff kid or a pastor's kid I didn't, I didn't see it in a negative way uh, um I don't really think I have many negatives either now I know that's not the story for everyone like I know of people where they honestly did have a hard time in their church or they didn't feel like their family was treated right and sometimes that is accurate sadly and so I, you know my heart obviously does go out to those people but for us personally I don't really feel like there were a whole lot of issues or things I felt were difficult. If I had to be honest, I think the older I get, maybe the more I would see negatives, and that's kind of weird because I'm not really in my dad's household anymore. But when you're younger, you're unaware of some of the things that are going on behind the scenes. And now that I'm older, I'm a little bit more... I'm going to cry. I don't even know why. <laughs> um, no, you're sensitive because now you have your own feelings in your own family. You know what it's like for people to have critical opinions of you. And when I see sometimes people that might be unhappy with something in the church and where it, it turns from the church to my dad or my grandpa or any of the staff, I now look at it and go like, oh, like I, I cringe. I feel sad for my dad because I know he's trying to do, you know, when you know your dad as well as we do. We know that he's the same person at home, that he's a church, and that's a very caring, and he wants to do what's best, just like he did with us when he raised us. He always wanted to give us whatever we asked for, whatever we wanted. He tried his very hardest to do it. So I would have to say that's the only thing that, now I'm a little bit more aware, and I do feel like my feelings are a little bit more sensitive to um, what goes on behind the scenes, and I do notice those things more. But and that would be the only thing that I would say that's bad. Um, the good things definitely outweigh any of the negatives. I Like Melinda was saying, there are a lot of pros, a lot of perks. Um, I felt like our church people have always been very kind to us, prayed for us, showed up for things in our life. I don't feel like they picked us apart or would you know always bring issues about us to our parents. I really feel like we've been treated very well by our church family. Yeah, I think, um, so it's pretty the pro of, so I guess, um, I don't, uh, yeah, kind of going with what you said, I think that I, I don't really necessarily, I don't feel like we grew up, like, where people were looking to pick us apart. I think that sometimes, because of your parents, if he's the pastor or the pastor's wife or the youth pastor's wife, because of their involvement in other people's <laughs> children's lives, like, what? No. Oh. Well, if, you know, because of their involvement in other people's kids' lives, especially a youth pastor or even a pastor, 
then there is a tendency for that person to be defensive and then look to criticize the pastor's child. I think sometimes that's why the whole like fishbowl thing comes from. It's because it isn't easy to take correction about your own child or, you know, see your own child struggling. So the easier thing to do is to then criticize that person's child. So I think sometimes that happened, but I think also, unless we were doing something wrong, my dad did a good job of shielding us from really knowing. Um, he didn't fill us in if people wanted to go vent to him about us, unless it was an, a legitimate issue. But um, I think that's something as a pastor that you can do for your kids is unless it's an actual problem, not really bringing to their attention every time someone has a criticism because unless it is a problem, there's really no reason for that child to think ill about another mm -hmm. adult. And I think that's what my dad and my grandpa and all them, Malcolm Mike, whoever did very well with raising all of us was that we, number one, we didn't know anything going on with other people's lives and they didn't, you know, tell us if someone was going through something. And then on top of it, even if that person had tried to include us, unless we were included in it, they didn't bring us into the discussion because I think they wanted us to think highly of everyone in the church and to feel loved by everyone in the church and feel supported. So I don't think, I didn't grow up feeling like I was in a fishbowl. I think I felt like I knew that my decisions were going to be magnified but that wasn't necessarily my dad's fault or anyone's fault. I think it's just, it comes from if someone is up in the pulpit telling you how to live, then it's going to be natural that those people examine your own life. So, you know, and I think part of why you probably see it now is because you are an adult and you can see you have more of the know on what people are saying and doing versus, like, that was one thing with my, my dad. Like, he didn't, yeah, he didn't share with us, like, people's negative thoughts or criticisms of him or us. So I didn't grow up resenting anyone mm -hmm. or feeling like it was us versus the church. Because I think you're not going to have, you're not going to want people to, your kids aren't going to want to be involved if they feel like they're constantly being torn down by those people. So right. the last question someone had sent in um, was, they had asked about if because we're pastors kids and we are involved in a lot of ministries, um, frequently do we feel like other people look at us um, in a way that with you know with being resentful that we are getting opportunities I personally don't really see this in our church I think for some smaller churches especially the pastor's kids kind of are the only option or the ones that can that the parents kind of make them do the different things and you know they have to do nursery they have to do special music there's no one else so I don't really feel like our case is the same but I do think you know naturally we might be you know singing sometimes more often or things like that because it is you know our dad that might call us up to sing or our grandpa so that might happen but I personally don't really feel like anybody's ever had an issue with how much we've been involved yeah and we also have a, a unique situation because it's like our grandfather's the pastor, dad's a co-pastor, yeah. uncle was the principal. So I think maybe sometimes there's resentment if you have like a bunch of leaders in a church that aren't all family because maybe there is some type of competition or something. But right. we didn't really, I didn't I know. think there's I enough think. ministry opportunities in our church to where there's enough for people to do. We don't take it all up kind of yeah. what you're saying and also but, like, I don't think you should really you, well we weren't I think if you're not presented as a ministry opportunity is your time to shine right. there really shouldn't be that attitude like we were never told like I never felt like we were getting up to sing because we were good singers it was like okay we want this song sung and you guys can learn it quickly so do it it wasn't which we wanted to but I don't, it's not a comp it wasn't a competition yeah I, I never saw as like Ministry right. opportunities is our time to shine. So basically, our answer. I think we'd all agree. No, no yeah. it's not a thing. Well, that was the last yeah. of the questions. So thank you for watching us as we ramble. <laughs> anyway, hopefully you enjoyed it, and there'll be 